Islam. Rise, 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 rise of Islam. Rise. We are stronger together, united as one. Oh my. The First Welfare Caliph Umar Radintala ruled the Rashidun Caliphate for ten and a half years and during this time, the Muslim Empire spread peacefully in many of the Roman and Persian areas. The Muslim Empire got so big that it included all of the Middle East area including Egypt, Libya, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, Iraq, and Iran. Caliph Umar Adantala created a strong, centralized government, police department, court system, and prison or jail system. Caliph Umar Adantala was very strict and never put any of his family members or relatives in a powerful position. He also changed his governors about every two years so they could not have too much power in one area or even divide the Muslim Ummah. As cities got bigger, they had to solve the water problem. So he built lots of wells and dug canals. He also created the first Arabic Hijri calendar. Caliph Umar Adantala created a strong paid army system and the army headquarters. Even during his time, official land measuring system started. He also started a system where they would count how many people were living in the Islamic Empire to help them properly. When the Muslim Empire was getting bigger and bigger, he started bringing in new ideas to manage the system to help the people in the best way possible. One of his great ideas was to create the first Islamic treasure center or known as the Baytul Mal, the house of money. During the Prophet and Abu Bakr Adantala's time, all the money or assets of the government would be divided between the people as soon as possible. But Caliph Umar Adantala decided to save money or assets to build public places like roads, bridges, canals, mosques, orphanages, retirement plans, disability benefits, child benefits, and even army protection so that all Muslims and non-Muslims would be safe in the Islamic empire from the enemies. Medina had the main or central Baytul Mal. Each town also had a branch of the Baytul Mal system. This system also helped create many jobs. For an example, some people were keeping record of how the money was spent, and others were in charge of guarding or protecting the building. Caliph Umar Adantala also started the world's first welfare system. So, everyone had the basic needs of life. The Muslim government made sure that Everyone had food, clothing, housing, health care, and education for both boys and girls. The Muslim government also gave money to the needy children, widow, orphan, poor, disabled, and those who are too old. The Muslim world was extremely advanced in this welfare system. This system was so advanced that the Western world first started this kind of advanced system only during the 1800s. Caliph Umar Adantala also started the open trade system in the Muslim world, so people had the freedom when doing their business. Caliph Umar Adantala discovered many modern ideas to help the people. He also worked very hard to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him more than we could possibly imagine. Umar Radantala was very honest caliph. During his time, the Muslim empire was very rich. 
But his lifestyle was extremely simple. He would always eat simple, dry, and hard foods. Sometimes his guest would come over but did not like to eat his food. They couldn't believe how the powerful caliph or the leader of the Muslim empire could eat such simple foods. One time, a group of Persians came to see the caliph Umar ibn Thala. At that time, he was sleeping on the ground and he was using rocks as his pillows. He also had no weapons or guards with him. They were surprised to see that the leader of such a big empire was living in such a simple lifestyle. His clothes were very old and simple with many patches. One time, the people were waiting for Caliph Umar ibn Thala to lead their prayer. It was getting very late, but he still wasn't coming. Finally, he came and apologized to his people and said that he was waiting for his clothes to dry because he had only one pair of clothes. The people felt bad and advised him to take some money from the Baytul Mal or the welfare program. Caliph Umar ibn Thala told them that he can't take the people's money without all of their permission. Sometimes he would be starving because he didn't have anything to eat. So his closest advisors and Ali ibn Thala told him that of course he had permission to have money from the Baytul Mal for his living, especially because he's the caliph. So, with everyone's permission, Umar ibn Thala took a very little monthly salary just to survive. Umar ibn Thala's simple and honest lifestyle helped many non-Muslims to accept Islam. He knew that it was his responsibility to take care of that big empire and showed the beauty of Islam to everyone by following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law and orders. He even created a secret intelligence program or undercover agents to go around to find the poor and needy so they could help them. But some bad Persian people did not like Islam at all and planned to do the most evil thing, which was to kill Caliph Umar ibn Thala. The Persians knew that Caliph Umar ibn Thala was a simple man and he didn't carry any weapons or have any guards to protect him. So one time in a bad non-Muslim Persian named Peruz came to Caliph Umar ibn Thala. He started to complain about his taxes as an excuse to get close to him. Caliph Umar ibn Thala treated him with respect and kindness and let him stay as a guest. At night, that evil Persian guy dipped his sharp knife in poison. The next morning, on October 31st of 644, he was waiting in a corner. As soon as Caliph Umar ibn Thala started leading the morning prayer, the evil guy immediately used his poison knife and hurt the Caliph six times behind his back. Caliph Umar ibn Thala fell to the ground senseless. The people tried to save their caliph and tried to stop that evil guy. He also hurt 12 other people with his knife and around half of them later died. When he couldn't get away, he decided to destroy himself. When Umar ibn Thala got his senses back at his house, he asked who that bad guy was. Hearing that answer, he became happy that the bad guy was not a Muslim. The doctors tried but could not stop his bleeding. Then Caliph Umar ibn Thala realized that his time was soon going to be over. His advisors requested him to pick their next Caliph. So 
He created a group with Uthman, Ali, Zubair, Talha, Abdurrahman, and Saad, peace be upon them all, and advised them to choose their next caliph from that great Sahaba group. He had only one last wish, which was to have his grave next to his closest friends, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the great Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu. Umar radhiyallahu anhu immediately sent his older son, Abdullah radhiyallahu anhu, to get permission from Aisha radhiyallahu anhu because she had plans to have her own grave next to her husband. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and her father Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu but she knew that Umar radhiyallahu anhu was a great muslim and was very close with the prophet and Abu Bakr so she happily fulfilled Umar radhiyallahu's last wish and gave permission by giving up her spot then 3 days later On November 3rd, in the year of 644, Umar bin Tala took his last breath as the second caliph of Islam, and his grave was next to Abu Bakr bin Tala. May Allah subhanahu wa taala give him the highest level in Jannah for all of his great work for the Muslim Ummah. Amin.